Hello, everybody. It's me, Spike. And I'm Kel. I'm Amanda, and Spike's trying to replace me. <laughs> Spike, you monster. <laughs> Amanda, never would I fucking ever, Amanda. What were you just about to say? What were you just about to say? (laughs) Okay, I'm sure everyone who, this is going to be some fucking weebery of the highest order, Mm. but there is a, I don't even know, what do they even call a VTuber, I guess, called Nyanners, and they have the most complex an interesting VTuber rig I have literally ever seen. Like at this point, we're all fucking used to it, right? It's just like little anime girl head bobbing in the corner, kind of, sort of, with the mouth flapping in time to what the person speaking is saying. But I wouldn't look. Yanner's rig is it's just fucking unhinged. It's incredibly complex and beautiful and kind of like bouncy, but at the same time, really fun to look at. And they got like a full body one. So they recently posted a thing where they were like literally playing charades with it, like full body charades with their audience. And it's like, I've seen a lot of VTubers like that. Yeah, I've I've seen it's pretty, it's it's not that uncommon. Yeah, Yeah, I've seen other VTubers too. She's not my first, but I'm saying her. I'm I'm talking about the level of complexity. Yeah, no, the complexity that you're describing is not. Like it's special. definitely a uh, setup. It's definitely, it's definitely requires better than most too. So I'm going to see. It's like one of the things that they're really good about is they talk about who did it, and the thought has crossed my mind. You know, hmm, wonder how expensive that is. And I have a habit. If I have a good year, I like to reward myself at the end of the year with a thing I buy for myself that I'm not allowed to feel bad about that I deserve and that probably costs a little bit and. I couldn't do it last year. I don't remember why. Oh, no, I remember why. Um, I couldn't do it last so, year so because wait. our TV broke. And oh, we wait. needed a brand. Huh? Are you going to start streaming? Anyway, uh, we couldn't do it last year because the TV broke. And we had to replace the TV. So my buy something nice for myself fund went towards replacing the TV with a slightly better TV that wouldn't break in five fucking minutes. And so now it's all Answer like, me. Well, we- Anyway, so well, when you think about it, I have like two Spike, years of Spike's just going to gonna hoard food. it and not <laughs> use it ever. Spike, um, does this mean you're going to start streaming video games? Anyway, it's been a real banner day. It's pretty exciting, huh? I'm, I'm, the- I'm being deliberately ignored. <laughs> First, I'm being replaced. Um, clearly, yeah. Clearly, Spike doesn't love you. Um, and... <laughs> I think Amanda, Spike just okay saw my avatar inching towards her. You. Thank you. I'm glad oh you God. love me. Amanda, I want you to know I'll always love you and you're irreplaceable Thank you. to me. Oh even God. though Spike is a monster and will toss you aside. Um, I can pull out the gun. <laughs> no, no. The gun isn't necessary. I just want you to answer me. Spike, are you going to start streaming oh video God. games when you do that? What I'm going to do is I'm going to fucking stroke the fuck out. Spike? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, that's all I wanted to know because I want to watch you play Rimworld and shit. God, yeah, I, I why? Was I'm a flip a table. Of, I was thinking about it, and I was thinking about it. It was a thing I I was definitely considering. <laughs> you know, it would be great. You get this like extremely fancy VTuber setup, and like we co-host, and I just use my puppet, my puppet VTube. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a little flappy mouth. Uh, puppet, yep. Yeah. Uh. Uh, yes, Spike is going to live stream her recreational war crimes. Spike, Yay. we should do a dueling. Uh, Spike, we should do a dueling RimWorld stream where you can commit your war crimes and I can commit my war crimes. Um, <laughs> I just started a new colony with um, Vanilla Psycasters Expanded, so I'm going to play with that a little bit. Um, gotta, oh, gotta turn people into mutants um and dogs um i am still on a very old playthrough that i refer to as my comfort playthrough like if i just want to chill for like half an hour i got that one going and it's the one that's basically if you've seen stargate you know what i'm doing i have not and <laughs> yeah and there was recently some high drama and this by the way everyone for folks unfamiliar with the video game RimWorld. This is why the creator refers to it as a story generator as opposed to a game. I had a couple aboard my ship 
married for a very long time. Like everyone aboard my ship, they're more machine than human nowadays. They have all these cyborg enhancements that make them super beings. And one, I had a habit of just keeping on board. And the other, I had a habit of sending on away missions. The wife got sent on away missions. The husband stayed home to just mind everything while she was gone. We got into a He's a house husband. He is. Way of the house husband. Yeah. While this was happening, by the way, before before, uh, everything really got going, out of fucking nowhere, despite the fact they're both deliriously happy and I got the screenshots to prove it, he divorced her. For like no reason. It's just a thing that can happen in RimWorld. Uh, the husband um, divorced the wife. And question: she, hmm? Do you have romance on the rim installed? I do not. Um, that makes yeah. divorce less likely, because or or more likely, depending on the the um, yeah. on because they'll like go up to each other while working and it'll just like give a quick peck on the cheek um, and get boosts yeah. from that. Um, yeah, that's that very more- cute. That makes more sense and definitely a totally fair criticism of base game vanilla ass rim world is some of the things the pawns, the little characters do make no sense and don't try to make sense because it's rolled on a random number generation they're, table. They're, they're upset because they ate without a table and that is <laughs> the, yeah. the most horrible thing that could ever happen to a person. Yeah. Like, But right after the divorce, I sent the wife along with a bunch of other people planet side to just raise a couple of bandit villages just for the fuck of it and while that happened we engaged in a ship battle i wasn't too concerned because you know the ship can pretty much take care of itself if there's like just a couple people on board but for some reason the shields did not go up in time and the ship got hit with something called mechanite disassemblers which basically is like a nano slime that rips the ship to pieces and I immediately sent husband down to take care of all that because, so we could you know, save we that wing of the ship itself. before it got completely disassembled by the mechanites. While he was fighting the mechanites, he just puffed into a red mist cloud. And then the, he was just gone. Like, I got no notice. The game notifies you when someone dies. I got no notification he was dead. And when I go and look in the tab that, you know, lists all the social relationships, he's not listed as dead. He's listed as missing. So he, like, the game didn't know how to deal with him being disassembled by mechanites. I have to assume that's what happened. And the wife came back. And keep in mind, he divorced her, husband divorced wife, not the other way around. So she didn't care. And she immediately began fucking his best friend. (laughs) It was Um, (laughs) My RimWorld setup, Spike. Yes. Is frequently, I call them mad scientist lesbians. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's their form of birth control, lesbianism. Um, because I have the mod that lets the pawns get pregnant. Uh-huh. Um, but I don't, I, I usually start with tribal so that way I can go through all the different stages. I have more fun that way. Um, and, but since you don't get, um, birth control till like way later, um, if you're starting on tribal, uh, that's, if they're not gay, uh, that's asking for like too many kids for you to handle to get born. Um, so uh, that's how I usually start. And then um, I made them a uh, hedonist so they can have a big orgy. Um, and I their also goal. Have orgy. <laughs> Ch- Bread uh, Wizard and, in chat and- says turned into Adams and cooked. Amazing. <laughs> That's exactly what fucking happened. She does not care at all. It's great. It's like she came back aboard the ship and after they fucking fixed all the mechanics. Inhaling ex husband vapor. Yeah, she just looked around, her husband was gone, and then she just fucking rocked right up to his best friend and was like, so. So, what's great about the my playthroughs is so uh-huh. I have porn on Morpher installed. Oh, so, yeah, when yeah, we yeah. catch prisoners, we turn them into chicken people and cow people and then chop their legs off so they cannot run away. Um, and the, so they just sit in the prison bed and produce milk and eggs and whatnot. And it's great. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've been meaning to experiment with... I'm sorry about this fucking <laughs> video game chatter, everyone. But When yeah, I I've play been... RimWorld... Um... You never play RimWorld. I know. <laughs> You play dinosaur game. I do play dinosaur game. 
you get hatched and then pretend to be a dinosaur for like an yes. hour every day. <laughs> 100%. There's a Diabloceratops herd forming tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs> and that's uh, fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Spike. Yes. On the topic of streaming video games. Yes. Um, I was considering doing a charity stream on Christmas because I hate Christmas. Um, I also hate and, Christmas. But, and it will give give me something to do on Christmas that is not Christmas related. Um, oh. But uh, so I, I might um, stream Rumworld on Christmas Day. Um, oh, that uh, interesting. Safety soup, exactly, Britters. Well, no, that's the Wendy Ceratops. I'm going to be playing a Diablo Ceratops. They don't get a sit in the soup. <laughs> Safety soup. Yeah, I mean, a Christmas stream might be a good idea. I obviously, I mean, I don't celebrate Christmas. So <laughs> Sometimes Wolf, oh, y'all want me to play Wolf game again? <laughs> Yo, okay, all right. I'm going to date myself real bad. There used to be a game that is just called Wolf, and you just Oh, no, this is Wolf, Wolf. Quest. A, a, oh, a friend... I know. I'm... I'm talking about something way older. A, a dino friend the other day was like, would you play Wolf Quest with me? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I live streamed it and uh, you can pick up the puppies. And I was like, I'm abandoning this in the woods. Goodbye. <laughs> wolf, just wolf. It was the people also went on to make a game called Lion. And I liked Lion way better because you could kill people in Lion, even though it was incredibly difficult to do so. They were all like Maasai tribes people. By the way, did y'all know there's some Maasai tribes people with Reddit accounts? They post about like the houses they live in and shit. It's pretty great. Well, no, I don't. I don't yeah. even know what I don't know what they are, <laughs> who they are. Uh, the Maasai are people in Sub-Saharan Africa. I believe they're in Kenya. Uh, they're probably best known for being really, really active, like cattle keepers. They oh wait, I think I know exactly who you're talking about. Never mind. And they wear a lot of red. Okay. Uh, Spike. Yes. Slightly off topic, but yeah. on the topic of video games, off topic of the side tribesmen, um, Crusader Kings was going to be free all weekend and on <laughs> sale. <laughs> and then the queen died and they immediately canceled that sale and deleted their tweet. <laughs> no, no, no cowards, fucking cowards. I prepared a special memorial for today. <laughs> what is it going to be? Put it on. I gotta say, I prepared a special memorial today. Uh huh. I'm desperate to see. I this. refuse to mourn the queen. Honestly, same. Okay, here's the bit though. Yeah. Like, I want y'all to go, and this is very self-serving and self-involved. But this is this was my genuine initial reaction. Just go ahead and fucking go to the history of Jamaica Wikipedia page, and you read that through. And then you tell me I should give a shit about the queen. Yeah, poor Thirst. We will always um, miss Miss. We will always yeah. miss Mr. Waffles. He's the one who deserves the memorial. Oh no, I love uh, Mr. Waffles. Oh no. Also, that dog, the fucking the Shiba Inu, who became the meme lord. That one. That one. That, um, one really that one's horrible. alive, also, but very old. Also, that fucking that. Remember that rabbit that would balance things on its head. Fuck y'all. Yeah. Happened. I there do. I just thought there was a second part to that sentence. No, there was a rabbit that there was a rabbit that had like pancakes on its head and stuff. And the owner, it was Japanese. The owner yes. would put like little little bits and pieces on its head, and it was a very chill rabbit. So it would sit there while the owner like quietly stacked shit on its head. And it was a great little rabbit. And that that rabbit, when that rabbit died, I was genuinely sad. That poor little rabbit. I mean, not poor okay. little rabbit. It lived a good life and all that, and it had an owner who clearly loved it very I'm much. I'm gonna I'm gonna share. My favorite reaction to the Queen dying. Okay. A bunch of Irish Star Trek nerds posted <laughs> data saying uh, yeah. Irish unification on um, reunification in 2024. And so they post that and be like, let's fucking go. Um, yeah, I retweeted that where it's like right on schedule. Yeah, and there was one that someone posted. Uh, it was all Black Twitter, Irish Twitter, and Indian Twitter today, and it was like three kids bopping to like some Gaelic music. It was pretty cool. So yeah, uh, it's like I don't know. It was like fucking like it's an imperialist, bloody-handed fu like. She was why, ninety-six. Why, why? I can only why? hope I'll reach ninety-six. Fucking why? Yeah, 96 would be nice, but fuck, like, fucking why? Why? Why should I respect that particular monarch? You know, why? Fucking why? EP no on reason. it. Yeah. 
it's just so fucking wild the whole oh you know don't speak ill of the dead by the way that statement don't speak ill of the dead it doesn't mean don't never say anything bad about dead people at all it literally means do not lie about dead people none of what i have seen on twitter has been lies about her that's so like don't give me that fucking don't speak ill of the dead shit sorry just don't um anyway um anyway Today, I uh, yesterday I watched all the new Star Trek. Um, I I'm not aware um, what is the new Star Trek anymore. The newest Star Trek is called Strange New Worlds, um, and so the complaint about Star Trek Discovery is that it doesn't feel like Star Trek, um, and I kind of understand that criticism because Star Trek Discovery is a kind of darker in tone and has more of an overarching plot in the whole season. Um, and so it feels like Strange New Worlds are people being like, oh, okay, well, we'll do that, what people were criticizing Discovery for then, but without like catering to shitheads that were just mad that Black people were in Star Trek um, because they didn't pay attention to the rest of Star Trek. Mm -hmm. um, that's bizarre. Uh, so, so uh, it's fun because it's like it's a little bit goofier. Um, it is very much we went to a problem and there is an allegory for today's political problem, like in a ham-fisted like story. That's like the moral of the situation. Um, there, there was a good goofy episode where they all got trapped in a, a storybook. Um, uh, I, I blanked out time. for a while because you're talking about Star Trek and you said a goofy episode and I was like, what? Goofy? Like, make yeah, this friend Star goofy? Trek? No. I know, I know, I know that silly. now, but that's what brought me back in. I was like, wait a minute, you mean like, wait, what? What am I missing? <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was a good time. Um, it, there, there's definitely an episode that um, while watching it, I was like, oh, they read um, Those Who Turned Away From, is it Omos? Or how do you say the? Um, I have no idea. Right. Uh, the Ursula K. Le Guin story about the kid that's suffering to make paradise. Um, that is one I know I what you're talking about, but I just don't remember how you yeah. say it right now yeah i don't know i don't remember how you say it but it, it's that story and it's basically like oh you took that and then you turned it into a star trek episode so hmm. um i was i'm really disappointed by the way today um i came no? on here i after i finish doing my my, my grave two-step tweets uh <laughs> I, I checked my follower count and then signed off for a few hours with the hopes I could come back and post a sassy tweet about 15 people unfollowed me in the hours since I posted and I bet they were all fucking but, scum. But no. I but people like followed you because you tap danced on the queen's grave? <laughs> yeah. I'm up like six people. So it, it's, I can't yeah. I can't make a sassy tweet about y'all wouldn't have liked it here anyway. I assure you, you know, so. Oh no, you're popular. Oh, way I am not popular. Everything on social media is fucking fake. You know that. We can get you banned. Then you won't have any followers. <laughs> no, I need. Okay, seriously though, can I just say something real quick that I think about sometimes? It's like, okay, every once in a while, there's this whole big thing about oh, everyone should fucking just leave Twitter. It's so bullshit. Half of it's fake. Blah blah blah. It's this, it's become this stupid, terrible, poisonous thing. And in my opinion like number one you must be new here because i have yet to find an online social arena that does not have its fake toxic element that's not twitter that's just being online that's the first thing number two actually spike what spike what that's society yeah yes okay <laughs> fair enough that's yeah. society but yeah, number two, no, actually, I am not abandoning the biggest megaphone I fucking have just because. Like, I'm no, just because you think it's a good idea. You're going to need a better reason than fucking that. No. Now, do um, I think the current decentralization, <coughs> I say the current re-decentralization of the internet that's slowly but surely happening right now, I think that's fucking good. I think that's great. I think y'all should all get various accounts on various sites and maintain them with the varying levels of attention that they deserve and merit. 
I don't think you should concentrate your presence in any one place. I think that's a bad scene. But I currently, I have not seen a persuasive argument to fucking leave Twitter forever other than Twitter bad. That is literally Um, one of the reasons I am where I am today professionally because of my Twitter presence. So no. Spike. On this topic. I had yeah. a conversation, I had a long conversation with Kevin and some other people that would remain anonymous uh, about social media um, in general. Like, what what are the social medias? Like, what are, what are people getting out of them? How can we make them less toxic? Like, kind of just uh, throwing ideas at the wall. Um, oh, I, I have several Twitter, of ideas, but yeah. Well, Twitter works for you because your instinct is to tell everyone all your interesting thoughts. Um, (laughs) Whereas um, like you have an interesting thought and you want to tell everybody. Um, Whereas I have a thought and I want to tell the person I know who cares about it. Like when I find out something about RimWorld, my instinct is not to tell the internet about RimWorld. My instinct is to tell you about RimWorld because I know Uh you care about RimWorld. A little Um, too much, yes. Right. But so um, because of that, regardless of the entire, like, even if Twitter was a perfect place where everyone was pleasant and wonderful all the time, um, I would still not like Twitter because the thought of trying to think of something, the ex- the, the mental exercise of trying to think of a thing that I should tell everybody about is exhausting. And like, that that it's like a super it's like a sailor moon villain has me and is stealing my energy um mm-hmm. there is nothing i can do that will make twitter ple- pleasant <laughs> because just the act of posting on with it that analogy, me. with that analogy with that analogy you remember the episode of where sailor venus is like desperate to get her pure heart stolen yes exactly <laughs> that's um, me that's um, me being like no wait why aren't you taking mine um and so um, I've had better luck with my newsletter because there is actually like studies that show the more you send out in a newsletter, the more people unsubscribe from your newsletter. Um, oh, yeah. People don't like being and, spammed. Yeah. So like me sending a newsletter out once a month, like that's good for me because I'm not constantly fighting a Sailor Moon villain. Um, <laughs> and it's good because the people who like newsletters don't Wait want to be talking to me every day. They want the monthly update is I've had several people tell me the amount that I send my newsletter out is their ideal newsletter update schedule. Oh, like, hey, actually, hey. in this metaphor, I think I'm the Sailor Moon villain. Oh, no. <laughs> Honestly, though, it's interesting, like, it's actually really interesting hearing you uh, talk about how you view Twitter and talking about I can't think of shit to say. It's like, I don't, that, I I do not fucking sit there and think of things to say. I always have. That's the point. That is the difference between me and you. Your instinct is to just go. And I have to be like, I have to, once again, post Mm. something on Twitter. Like, um, there, uh, like, um, Basically, um, uh, this is also partly why I never really got into drawing a lot of fan art is mm-hmm. because my ins I like it, it was a chore to think of, well, what do I draw in this fan art picture? And yeah. the only times I have successfully drawn a lot of fan art is when I was like, okay, I am using this fan art to get better at coloring or something like that. Um, rather than drawing fan art for the sake of drawing fan art. Um, Mm. It's just not a thing that I enjoy on an instinctual level. And so it is more effort for me to go into it. So um, in the whole me thinking of Twitter as a Sailor Moon villain. um, I'm so sorry. uh, Yeah, it's awful. Um, I hate it. Um, Sorry for doing that to you. I, I hate all social media for that reason. Um, yeah. But basically, um, the other thing is Twitter works great for you, Spike, because like I said, that's 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 where yeah. your heart lies. That's where your instinct is. Uh-huh. Um, Spike's a chatterbox, and, and you're not. Right. It's also... Like um, it's also... Um, 
trying to fake it. Like if you do not naturally have Spike's inclination for Twitter, faking it, people can tell that you're faking it. Yeah. And so you're exhausting yourself. And also um, people are uh, like can tell that you don't want to be there on some level. Yeah, the, the, um, the, being, for sure, for sure. the being sincere thing is probably why like I do like hit and run tweets. Like suddenly you'll see me tweet for like an hour and then boom, I'm gone for the rest of the day. Then I come back and it's like, hello, hi, yeah. time to scream for two hours and then I leave. Yeah, Bird Wizard just said um, the best posters are often interesting or deranged or both. I like to think I'm a little of both. I mean, admittedly, when I move, <laughs> which I'm doing soon, hopefully, um, uh, I'll be less chatty on Twitter because I can yell at people in meat space. Yeah. Spike, specifically. Um, so, Ooh. so the other thing is um, we were talking about different social medias having different pros and cons. All of them sort of have that you need to want to share a bunch of bullshit on a, on a regular basis and have that instinct, um, which is why I hate all of them. Um, but, um, so, um, but they all have different pros and cons. So like right now, Tumblr is not as good for self promo because, um, first of all, Tumblr has become all shit posting. Um, how it should but it be also, thank god tumblr doesn't these days get you out of your circle a whole lot so uh -huh. um you mostly just see the people you follow um so in some ways that's great in some ways like like that's the one of my main complaints about reading twitter is i don't care about these other people i just want to i i don't i don't follow them for a reason like if i cared about what they had to say i'd be following them already twitter please yeah. stop showing me my friends likes um, um i actually have a special thing where i have figured out a way to make twitter never show me that shit so i i i do too and it's called not checking twitter um <laughs> no, no actually but, hold on um, let me go real quick and look but yeah, keep going. I'm gonna just But but yeah, so so it's like Tumblr is if you prefer to stay in your bubble, but that's not very good for artists trying to get the word out. No. Nope. Um TikTok's algorithm seems to be the most powerful. Like TikTok does not want to show you who you follow. TikTok wants to show you like the thing. Instagram's that it doing the same will... shit now. Yeah. Yeah, I fucking um, hate that shit so much. Um, but we, we want to expand better. your horizons. Like, no, thank mm. you. Uh, but that makes it better for promo because, like, you're getting the word out to more people. If the algorithm um, likes what you're promoing, the, but it's also <laughs> the mysterious algorithm. Al well, because the algorithm is so powerful, you can accidentally end up in the wrong TikTok bubble. Um, so I gave an example of. If I had a TikTok that I was updating um, and I posted my werewolf stuff and my cautionary fable stuff, um, it I might, because cautionary fables is kid friendly, end up on like kids books TikTok, but that's not going to help me sell my werewolf stuff. Um, so that might in the long run, like hurt me um because like okay that's great for cautionary fables but um i also have uh gay werewolves oh, in the future to tell you about yeah um i just found a thing i just want to okay everyone real quick the way that i may i keep twitter usable for starters i i have a massive block list for seconders uh i have three muted words and i'm going to post them here that is the first. I'll share my technique in a second. That is the second. And oop, and that is the third. I uh, that is the entirety of my muted words list. Are what you hacking does, the chat? I'm I'm banning you. <laughs> what that does is it strips out suggestions and this is what your friend liked and recycled tweets. It makes it so that Twitter um, does not show that. And Depending on where you look at Twitter, that does not always work because I have also muted all those things. Um, yeah, well, so. I've got it on the desktop. Nine times out of ten, I'm on the desktop. I don't really look at it on my phone. And I also have 
uh, obviously a bunch of things that block things like uh, you block origin is what I've got. And it does a thing called uh, element zapper. And if there's something on Twitter, you don't want to fucking see, like, for example, the what's popular stuff on the sidebar, you can strip that out of your viewing window and uh, never look at it. Also, and these you, are things I do to make Twitter bearable. Also, you can make lists of people and just look at the list. Yeah, also that. You um, can make a list and just look here, at here's the other. Okay, here's a fun thing to do with Twitter. Mm -hmm. Block every ad. Like, every time an account that uh, you get a promoted tweet, block that account. <laughs> yeah. And eventually, you start to get people trying to advertise their cult or their, like, psychic crystals or uh the how their ancient aliens theory um so spike specifically you should block every promoted tweet that you see so you can get some real weirdos or, uh, or you could a... just or you could just be like me i'd legitimately never catch up on my timeline and if i want to check up on friends i just go to each of my friends twitter profiles and read their last few tweets that's what I do. Yeah, that works too. Whatever, if you like Twitter, but there are parts of it you don't like about it, you know, there's a lot of ways to make that bearable. Not that I'm here like, oh, you have to like Twitter. But the thing is, I can't fucking sit here and pretend it hasn't like changed my life in a tangible way. Our best selling book of 2020 and possibly 2021 before everything's said and done was an idea I found on Twitter where I was like, yo, you should make this into a book. I'll publish it. <laughs> and that that's just how it is um and someone asked how many blocked accounts i have i i do know how many let me just let me go ahead and see Twitter here. tells you like it's in the settings it's in the settings but it's only in no, the phone I'm curious settings. how many i don't have a how many blocked um, i got now i gotta look no that it's not under account i i have a bunch just because i i have blocked every tv show that's ever been advertised to me like i like like i said I regularly block uh, any ad that pops up. Settings. What's it under? Um, I'm going to go to settings? where is settings? Your account. Where the fuck is settings? Account uh, information. It might be under account information. I know it's like on the phone. The problem is it. It fucking it's different. Whether you're on the desktop or whether you're on your phone, which is obnoxious. Maybe it's under privacy and safety. Yeah, it's under privacy and safety on your phone. And you go to mutant block. Okay, um, I have 321,767 blocked accounts. Oh, it doesn't tell me how many I have. Yeah. Um, if you're on the desktop, it won't. You have to use your phone. PP, I don't care. Yeah, um, like I said, but yeah. Blocked accounts, 321,767 blocked accounts. And part of the reason is that I got in before Twitter started putting limits on how many you could block at one time. So there was times I was blocking literally two, three, five thousand accounts in one go. And I kind of practiced decent Twitter hygiene where if I if a shitty tweet crosses my dash because I'm investigating a topic, I click over to that person's account and I run, what is it called? Let me mouse over here i clover to that person's account and i run red block which basically blocks everyone that follows them because if you follow a shitty person chances are you're a pretty shitty person too so i block all their followers and then it blocks them the problem is it has a limit of five it still doesn't tell me blocks. how many how, how why hmm. did you lie to me yeah i do not um, get cult kenton johnson i'd love to get more cults that's why I'm saying block all the promoted tweets. Yeah, I suppose I could. But the thing is, once again, how Twitter is set up on my desktop, I literally don't see promoted tweets. So, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, you're missing out on some very entertaining guys. Uh, no, I'll, I'm fine. Uh -uh. I don't, here's the thing. I am so unbothered by Twitter. Like, again, I don't read my feed, so I'm very unbothered by the ads. I'm just like, scroll, 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 ignoring lots of things till I see a picture I like. Yeah. Also, okay. A Kel, picture of a rat? About... Thank you, pretty art. Thank you. Then I leave. Yeah. But... Kel, you were talking about how to make, you were brainstorming how to make fucking Twitter better. My first and genuine fucking suggestion for literally everyone in this room and everyone they know, stop signal boosting cockheads stop dunking on idiots 
who are tweeting outrage bait because they know you'll quote tweet them. And you're not, so the so stuff Spike, isn't fucking you're, worth elevating their platform. Just stop. Right, but Spike, you're talking about reading uh, Twitter, where I'm talking about posting to Twitter being better. Um, so um, retweeting is but, posting. I said reading Twitter. Um, because, oh, oh. um, because single signal boosting cockheads like that is part like you had to read the cockheads, uh, tweet before you signal boosted it. Um, but um, so uh, talking about like how someone like me is never going to like Twitter and uh, to go trying to make Twitter work for me is like going to a poison chalice. Um, and I'm only hurting myself every time I use it. Um, so, um, one of the ideas that, um, we, in this brainstorming sesh, uh, was making a discord, um, for fans and readers and uh, whatnot, um, which don't... I just did. So that's, oh, this God. is me God promoting. speed, Kel. Uh, if you want to be invited to my fan discord, just shoot me a message and I will add you. I'm telling you um, right now, I will die before I ever make a Discord for fans. Yeah, it's uh, like, real talk, Iron Circus occasionally Who's does your mods? Uh, yeah, Iron Circus. Um, uh, uh, one of the uh, anime kids volunteered to be a mod. Um, yeah, Jen just said, yeah. oh no, you are so brave. Yeah, it's like Iron Circus does run certain things out of Discord, for example, when we but that's are putting private. together an anime. Exa I was about to say. Yeah, uh, when we're putting together anthologies, coordination via Discord can be really convenient. But as for like an open-ended, open-door policy, Iron Circus Discord, hell motherfucking no. Absolutely not. You were talking to a bitch who was in AIM, you know? I remember <laughs> the IRCs. IRC. Yeah, no. I'm not having that no. my, be my responsibility. No. I can tell you right now, and I'm sure this is not unique to art. Like there's a, the uh, moment there's chat, drama, and right. I, while I'm in bed in my Discord, I'm gonna lose my shit. Yeah, it's like art chats. Maybe a, all my experience is with cartoonist slash art chat. So, you know, your mileage may vary, but I can tell you, fucking right now, that shit gets weird. That gets real fucking weird. What do you, I, Badger? Like, I do not have a fan discord yeah it's yeah uh i've i'm in a couple of fan discords and um some of them are okay there's a few that i'm like all right this is my goal um about interaction level and chillness level um uh and um i so far things are going okay for mine yeah. um, that's honestly it's like there's gonna be some oh god this sounds so horrible but like i have tried to participate and not going to name any names you're not getting any so fuck you i've tried to participate in those kind of like we're all trying to make it out here in this crazy world as artists we have tons in common let's air quotes network in the same irc channel in the same aim in the same whatever on the same forum spike and spike that's what, how what? we met yes i that's know let me met. finish <laughs> i'm just saying though like they're the vibe gets real weird and shitty the minute anybody starts to gain ground on anybody else. And that's just a fucking but, fact. So that, though, Spike, is a professional um, chat. This is um, um, for people that are fans of my stuff, uh, not a pro chat. Like, no, I get that. For, yeah. I get so, that. I just couldn't but, personally... So, yeah. I just couldn't personally ha handle what is, like, the level of, like, walled had that would be taken away from between me and people who, like, like, there's, like, a kind of a, a wall between me and Twitter followers. And I'm mm -hmm. obviously most of my followers are pretty chill, but I have had the far too comfortable with me and the far too, oh, here's my chance to talk to you a lot. Parasocial. No, I wouldn't even say parasocial. I mean, just no? personalities I can't handle. Uh, so the thing that I put in is um, there is a thing in the rules and it's in the middle of the rules to prove that they read it, that they have to do before they can post anything. Um, uh, and um, the other thing is um, 
they have to get an invite link from me. Uh, no one else is allowed to send out invite links. Um, so uh, I also have one of the rules is Kel can ban you for any reason whatsoever. No, see, um, that invites drama. That straight up invites drama. Me being able to ban people for any reason because I feel like it? Um, yes, literally, yes. I, I've had experience with past fan communities where individuals obeyed the letter of the law, but not the spirit of the law. And that's why that it, rule is there. Um, Cause I, I'm not putting up with that shit. I'm just saying Godspeed, um, you're braver than me. That's all I'm yeah, going to say. I'll drop up. it from here on out. Cause that's, you just described like things I've had nightmares about like, Oh, well we made a discord. It's yours. Like, no. Yeah. I, I'm not interested. I'll never be fucking interested. I, I think discords in a professional coordinating capacity, very useful, have used them. We'll continue to use them. Discords is like, Hey, just pop into the iron circus discord. It's like, I'm fucking Cassandra from Greek myth. I can see every, I can see that going wrong in real time. I could predict month by month how that would fucking eat itself. I no, not a chance. Yeah, that's why I'll be, right. like, in part of communities, but nothing that's centered around me. In fact, I had one and, and I deleted I, and it. I am saying this, I have to admit, I am coming at this from the angle who, I have had people become, the best way to put it, um, unjustifiably fixated on both myself and Iron Circus, as in, this company is my one chance to make it in comics. Which is Here ridiculous. Which is, yeah, I mean, it's it's total bullshit. I like, we love the one, company, but like... I am not your one fucking chance in comics. You know, I'm, I'm 100% fucking not that. I am a woman who founded a small mid publishing company and runs it out of a Slack channel. There Badger are many, be nice many... to me. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am one of many publishers out there, especially these days. I'm not your one chance. I don't care what you have convinced yourself of, okay? And I have, okay, like real talk, I mean, just for the room, there have been some very obsessed and weird ass fucking people on my jock for daring to be better at this than they are, okay? Or daring to say no to them. All right. And when I say say no to them, I mean, I like how you say this is just for the room like this. Like, what yeah. if the show pops off in the future? This video gets like tons of views. Well, I mean, it's it is what it fucking is. Yeah. But again, there it's like and when I say say no to them, like we have reviewed the graphic novel you have sent us and we have decided against publishing it or uh, you submitted yourself to this anthology and we've decided not to include you. There are people who have verifiably lost their fucking minds occasionally publicly about shit like that because they are unduly and unjustifiably preoccupied with me and Iron Circus for whatever fucking reason. And I am not interested in fostering an environment that would just make that happen again, except easier this time because someone out there, I fucking guarantee because this is how the human brain works, is convinced if they can just be my friend, they'll have it made. See, and for me, not... it would just be the moment I see two people in there getting into a fight over something stupid, I would just leave and never come back, even though it's like, this is Amanda's Discord. Where's Amanda? Oh, she she hasn't been here in like three years. Yeah, she booked ages ago. Uh, yeah. Well, I was also thinking about using it to do little events that are just for people in the Discord. Um, like... Uh, so my mod is a young animator named Conti, um, who uh, we were brainstorming last night, and I think I might do uh, let's watch a werewolf movie on the full moon um, or something like that on the Discord. Um, yeah, watch parties are a cool idea. I know there are various streaming platforms that like allow for watch parties. So yeah, so I might like organize werewolf themed watch parties. Um, and other such things um because you know if you're reading my shit you probably like werewolves um, probably probably there's a high <laughs> likelihood um and um so uh yeah so it's just like uh i'm gonna see how it goes um the thing is is so like my goal is there is a fan discord for a podcast group i like called chipperish um they do multiple podcasts um, and 
Um, I it seems like the reason why their Discord is fairly chill is because they're very good at like politely giving warnings when people are getting close to breaking the rules. Um, and also I think their fan base leans older. So um, you don't get yeah. as many people who can't now, uh, handle. I might be into having my own discord for like followers and stuff. If discord let me implement an on and off button, like we're closed right now. Amanda's in bed. You cannot post here. <laughs> like that's my thing. It's like Amanda's on vacation for a week. No one can post here. Yeah. I, that would I flip have, things for me. Imagine like going on vacation for a week or going on sabbatical for sabbatical for a week and then coming back in like Donald Glover in yeah. the same community <laughs> with the pizza and just everything's on fire and there are people dead on the floor. Oh yeah, it just... turns out like there was like two people started dating each other and like there was like yeah. a love a love triangle started between like a mod and two members. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Ooh, bless you. But yeah, uh, I mean, and again, it's just Okay. Wait, Badger, you can do that? Yeah. What, what, what I said, the, be able to like say, like, yeah. we are closed. We have office hours. We are open. You may vibe with Amanda. Okay, Amanda's going to bed. You are... N get out. Go. Yeah. yeah. The real talk, and this this may be just me, but... Oh, with permissions. Every but you'd have to turn while, the permissions on and off, though. That's the thing. Yeah, every once in a while, the YouTube algorithm will show me a video that's all like the downfall of this pervert Minecraft YouTuber or something like that. And it'll just automatically play. And in fucking variably, <laughs> there are Discord screenshots involved every single fucking time. It's the pre-bingo square. And I'm all like, uh oh, you know, you are really making Discord look like Pedo Central. I'm not particularly <laughs> interested. Anyway. <laughs> oh, Badger uh, could uh, thought... program a bot to automate it with a command. Okay. Hit me. We can talk um, then. I'd be interested yeah, in that. It all sounds like fucking work to me. So it's like. Well, I wouldn't well, mind because I is, like socializing me, with people. I just don't want this yeah, to happen for, uncontrollably. Yeah. For me, this is a way of socializing with readers that doesn't drain my energy. No, that's completely um, fair. Yeah. So that yeah. that's why I was like, Discord might be the answer to my uh some of my social media problems i still need to use twitter for promotion and whatnot um but yeah i built a bot that like tells everyone where i'm going live on twitch and i also got a bot that like auto posts my tweets on there um i also don't want people to be able to message me or see what my username is though. that's the other thing yeah uh, I do let people do that um, because uh, I have a couple of Patreon exclusive channels in there, so people have to be able to message me to give me their pay the email they backed my Patreon with. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm sure um, you can program uh, Discords to do a lot, but like one of the things that's kind of on the Iron Circus wish list that. You know, I can't really justify the expense right now, but I feel like I'm maybe a year away from not really having a choice about it is just having a social media manager type. And they would also be in charge of like any chat stuff. And uh, that I'm... is as soon as I have the dollars, that's like the first thing I'm going to buy. Yeah. Like as and... an assistant, like that's that's the first thing my assistant's yeah. going to do here. Here's my social medias. You do things yeah i would love it if there was someone that i could pay a certain amount a month to basically your job is you post to the iron circus twitter three times a day here's what you post you're in charge of making the graphics here's the access to all the graphics and make sure that you post to the twitter the instagram the facebook page the tiktok make sure that you know you're advertising these books oh it's this month therefore advertise these books by these creators that cover this topic Bye, and have it be very regimented all right bye jen oh my god netflix oh, added I... morbius jen no it's fucking morbin time it's not even that uh... bad it's mediocre <laughs> no jen no it's fucking morbin time is what it is but yeah uh... um 
that is like i'd love to like not care about that ever again because there was a time i was all like oh that's bullshit i can do that that's easy but no now it's like an hour out of my day to do all that shit and i could spend that hour way better elsewhere uh, i i've been talking to uh there's a person that's been um flatting you are the chosen one who is good at the internets and being a social media person and i did write a big document for them that's like so this is what you need to do um the thing is is i need to get further ahead in my comics so that way um they have time to like make the images for when the comic updates and whatnot mm -hmm. uh, but um yeah so i just wanted to share those how much i hate social media thoughts with everyone here yeah i definitely um, don't hate social media i think it has given me a platform i would have otherwise never had especially no i, I agree but, that yeah. same 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 hat but yeah. also i hate it for that reason yeah um but and it's like the thing i constantly say um i don't know if i've said it in public i've definitely said it to y'all before but I have said before, it's like, if I had tried to go about entering, you know, air quotes, the comics industry as it was in like the year 2000, keep, keep in mind, not today, uh, in my youth, if I had gone about trying to enter the comics industry, the air quotes, proper way through the approved of channels, they would have made fucking sure I washed out before age 25. Like, absolutely. And I'm not talking about they'd be burning fucking crosses on my lawn because, you know, we live in a world where hopefully you folks are more familiar with sort of like the the things that make sure underrepresented voices stay underrepresented in the machinery of, you know, corporate what corporate white supremacy. Like we're I hope we're all it's, fucking aware of that. It's also OK, Spike. Yeah. Comics as an industry is an industry that eats its young, and that's yeah. before you even get into you're not a cis straight white guy. Yeah. So, um, it's it's like extra looking to devour anyone that uh has any type of marginalized identity. Yeah, and it's it's just one of those things where it's like there are chances I simply would not have been offered, not because someone, like I said, fucking burns a cross on their lawn every morning it's because they're like i don't know i agree though i don't have the interest you know as our current as our current readership you know shit like that i agree but i don't think i specifically uh mean twitter when i'm thankful i think i mean social media in general because i pretty much had the same reach and followers as i on tumblr when it was everyone was using it as i do now on twitter and like mm -hmm. there was the same on deviantart so like I think just having internet platforms in general mm -hmm. has helped a lot. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Cause like, Absolutely. I think I'm one of those weirdos who can adapt to most platforms Yeah, because I'm just and a social person who's like, look at the thing I made, look at it, thrust it in your face, look at it and tell me it's pretty. Yeah, I'm absolutely like that too. And I am naturally suspicious of larger platforms. Let's say that more so than I was a few years ago these days, because like, we all know fucking Elon Musk is full of shit, but the whole, like, he got high one night and decided to tweet he was buying Twitter and the fucking scurry that kicked off. It's not a lesson I have forgotten, you know? So I am really happy to diversify onto smaller platforms. I'm, I'm perfectly happy not limiting my interactions to centralized platforms i'm not going to sit here and call twitter a big platform it's big ish but in terms of social media it is definitely you know it's I don't not facebook it, i don't think it's top 10 even if you count everything including the stuff that's in china i don't even think it's top 10 but at the same time it's big ish but at this but i'm i'm okay with being on here again it's done things for me sort of profile wise and career-wise that i'm not going to sit here and pretend didn't happen but at the same time there is more to life than having the largest audience possible on the biggest platform. it's also spike the type of stuff that you make is targeted at people that are probably on twitter yeah um like because in this discussion one of the other people who uh were in it and like i said they want to all remain anonymous we're mm -hmm. talking about how if you were a children's book author, <laughs> having a social media presence does not fucking matter because uh -huh. kids, like five-year-olds are not on Twitter. Yeah. Like, 
Um, You're all so, TikTok. No, not even TikTok. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, so it's basically like, because they're not finding their books themselves, teachers and librarians and kids' bookstore owners are shoving things in their face. Um, like, you can survive without a social media following if you are a kid's, uh, children's book author, because, yep. like, you, you, the, your audience is not looking to Twitter for recommendations. Um, but since you publish porn or, like, weird sci-fi or, uh, weird fantasy, um, it's, it is more, um, those people are going to be on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. And I do understand before anyone brings it up, like the weird sort of thing I've got going on where obviously I want to grow Iron Circus into a larger and more influential company. I want to publish more books. I want to take on more creators. I want to do more, but at the same time, I want to stay kind of like shitty little counterculture stepchild, you know, <laughs> it's like, I, I fucking get mm -hmm. it. I get it. But it's those two conflicting, you know, those are my two wolves. <laughs> those conflicting things are the things I contend with where, yeah, I do want more people aware of Iron Circus and seeing what we have to offer because I think what we have to offer is fucking bomb. But at the same time, I have passed by many, many opportunities to put bluntly sell out, go mainstream that I have turned my nose up at intentionally because it's not my fucking vibe and if i want a job i hate just for the sake of money i might as well go fucking work in a cubicle somewhere mm -hmm. yeah I, i'd probably make more you know it's it's just one of those things yeah it's like it's an interesting balance kind of figuring that navigating that shit because i think we all have those sort of lines we won't cross you know like we won't make an nft we won't mm -hmm you know, make a recruitment pamphlet for the U.S. Army. We won't do this. We won't do that. Even if it pays really well, we won't do it. And I I have come across those lines over the years. And so far, I'm pretty pleased with how things have shaken out. Um, you know, could be better, could be worse. But it it's, it's from a mid-career perspective, just kind of looking back and looking forward, I'm pretty satisfied. I was reading the new Anatole of Howard comic. Isn't it fucking good? It's so cute. <laughs> it's so fucking good. The little rabbit with the Inu Inuyasha shirt. It's so fucking good. It's so good. I love the friend I love said it to me and short. I was like, oh. I love how short its little ears are. Okay. <laughs> I love it. And the inking short. is really nice. <laughs> Don't cry. You're live. <laughs> you can't stop her. <laughs> also, I, I fucking love that people are posting more comics to Twitter, especially in like, you know, threads. Oh, yeah. shit rules. Like, because it's not the ideal way, you know, to display a comic, but it's super convenient if someone is posting a long format comic. If it crosses your dash, it's in a thread. And you're like, oh, I can just read the whole thing. That That's cool. You know, that's mm -hmm. easy. Yeah, I might start doing that as an experiment because... Obviously, it works for you because you have a massive Twitter following. Uh, yeah. But uh, I want to see if it will also Whoa. work for me be with a smaller Twitter following. I do not have a massive Twitter following. You do. Compared really... to my Twitter following, your Twitter <laughs> following is very big. Um, but it's not objectively large. It's very average. That is a lie. Okay, you know what? Um, All right. we'll, we'll fucking settle this right now. Average amount of Twitter followers let's see if someone has done the math on this how many followers does the average twitter user have i'm about to i'm about to read it here we go oh okay never mind <laughs> <laughs> you want to know what is her? the average twitter <laughs> follower count Spike? okay here we go here we go um, I'm about to expand it, and I don't know how accurate this is, everyone, so whatever. Just I read, read the number. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, the facts. 93.6% of Twitter user users have under 100 followers. 98% of Twitter users have under 400 followers. 
35% of Twitter users have over 500 followers. 0.68% of Twitter users have more than 1,000 followers. So I guess I am in the 1% on something. I'm special. <laughs> yeah. For yeah, once I'm... it happened, I'm special. <laughs> you are special. We're all special here. We're all in the 1%. Yeah. This is the only the only time we'll ever be in the 1%. Uh, I have someone in my chat saying, pretty sure all my followers are from just replying to Iron Spike tweets. Mm. Oh, that's cool. But yeah, I, I'm just now Google, you know, Google has that whole bit where if you ask it something, it'll show you the most frequently asked questions. And it has things like, what happens if you reach 10,000 followers on Twitter? <laughs> instantly like banned the world the world dies they send you five dollars Hagrid shows up that's what happens fucking gives you your horror. no you're not allowed to reference that that's the bad book um uh, i refuse you... that's that's one of the rules in my discord is you cannot talk about <laughs> that book or its author in my discord that, that is bannable offense the so read um, the read another book clause so what you're saying is it's she who shall not be named. Uh, here it is. <laughs> Rule number three. No Harry Potter talk. <laughs> Kelly hated Harry Potter before it was cool. And now that we know that J.K. Rowling is a turf, there is no reason to just talk about it or J.K. I'm funny. <laughs> the average, by the way, the overall average, and keep in mind, this is not the median, which is different from the average. The overall average of uh, that people have number followers on Twitter is 707. So there we go. 707. Yep. If you have exactly 707 followers on Twitter, you are an average Twitter user. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, yes. All right. I, I guess what I have is a lot. It doesn't feel like a lot because yeah, I don't suck know, on that yeah. spike. <laughs> How does it taste to be wrong about something so small? I'll be fucking real. It doesn't feel like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think also you get desensitized to it. Yeah, I think I yeah. do. I think I do. It honestly, it's easy. What does a banana cost, Michael? Ten dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's like I follow and am followed by a lot of people with way more than that. So it's all like whatever. I'm just a cartoonist. Of course, my follower count is that low. So life, she goes know. on. Yeah, it's just I've you know I follow a lot of YouTubers, especially and musicians and stuff, and uh, political commentators, and they like their fucking followers. I follow a lot of meme six, accounts, six figures, maybe even like a toilets with yeah. threatening auras. I fucking love toilets with threatening auras. Very good account. It's an rat a day. Account. I'd like to follow yeah. rat a day. Uh, uh, I follow. I follow, I follow hourly wolves. That's yeah. that's the one Twitter I do check every day. Mm -hmm. I strongly suggest I love shirts web, that go hard. I I strongly su suggest Web three is going just great. Oh yes, that's a good one too. <laughs> oh, a, I, see, I don't need to follow that because you send me all the really good. Yeah, ones, true. So, um, yeah, but uh, I also. But sometimes it's nice to beat Spike to something like I already know. Ha -ha! Yeah, I also follow a lot of uh, automated art twitters, but I won't fucking retweet them anymore because they're by a crypto bro. I still follow them because I like seeing it on my timeline, but I won't fucking retweet and signal boost that shit. No engagement for you. And no engagement for you. No fave. So, 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 in so. the ongoing, in season, in, in this ongoing Amanda character arc, in season one of the Iron Circus Geek Show anime, <laughs> I have, I decide, I have, uh, hun, basically, it sounds weird to say come out to my family, but basically, uh, I, my, my, I've informed my family of my intentions to move Chicago, and it, Chicago. nobody nobody died. Chicago. Good. Welcome. Everyone should move to Chicago. It's pretty fucking great here. It, I'm excited. It's pretty cheap, too. It, I, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't, think... obviously, I haven't gotten approved for an apartment yet, and I could still get rejected yeah. by everything I apply for, but... That's the plan. If you, yeah, if you, uh, if you contrast it, like Kel said, it is cheap. If you contrast it with other oh, yeah. urban areas, so I mean, if you can deal with the winters, it's great here. I know a lot of you folks. I was already winter, reading but... articles today about what how to take care of your rats if your power goes out during winter. Um, put, put them in your shirt. I I can't do I'm that glad all day. That, 
I'm I'm glad I could share with you uh, the kitty litter trick. Um, yeah, a lot of people share with me the kitty litter trick. I did a thread on Twitter asking like, what should I know as someone coming from coastal Texas before I get there that might surprise me? And I got a lot Spike, of advice. Do you know the kitty litter trick? You don't Spike drive, doesn't so drive. I don't know if you know or not. Kitty litter is what but, you put on ice. I am from Maryland. <laughs> okay. I am aware of the kitty litter trick. So but yeah, yeah, that's. Yeah, um, I mean, again, to fucking stand for the shit out of Chicago. I, I love it here. I moved here <laughs> to go to the School of the Art Institute, which was bullshit. But the town was enough to make me stay. The culture here is fantastic. The vibe here is fantastic. You don't have to worry about your bodily autonomy being revoked by the government here. <laughs> it, I guess. It, I guess if I can't find a place, me and my rats can just, like, steal, like, sneak into Spike's warehouse. You can live under my coffee table. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, I I mean, I, I've been to other cities and I have actually straight up sat there and carefully interrogated myself. Like, are you just being a fucking Chicago stan or do you legitimately, for valid reasons, like it better than LA and New York? Spike, we spent like 30 minutes like last episode talking about how great Chicago is. I'm just saying. It is. It's great. Yeah. It's great. We have officially yeah. sold Amanda on Chicago. Um, oh, yeah. I was technically uh, sold on it in 2009. It's just the pandemic crushed my spirits. Oh, but my spirits are kind of, you know, they're reinflating. Oh, it's not over. And gorging. Uh, Pandemic isn't over. I didn't say it was over. Did I say it was over? <laughs> did anyone here see those New York City signs for the Yes, subway? we all did, and it's terrible. Oh my fucking god, it's okay. the worst. Uh, I'm gonna send you the page that I just finished, and I need uh, opinion. No. Um, we're no, we're doing good job. No. Okay. I want an opinion. Uh, show me it. Show me, show me. Let's see it. Okay, hold on. It didn't do what I wanted it to do. Give me a moment. Did I tell y'all I saw a chopped dick the other day? Uh, 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 no, say that one not. more time. Um, what did you say? I saw, all right. There was no, no, no. Say the around. sentence. Did I tell y'all I saw a chopped off dick the other day? Don't want to hear about this. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes, 100%. And you know that. I really don't want to. Okay, okay, okay. I will not I'm Putting share. my little foot down. Share. It goes <laughs> squeak because it's got a clown shoe. Squeak. I will not share. Thank you. How long until our... Oh, oh, no. There is... Paul, there is no reason for us to organize a con in Chicago because cake exists. <laughs> if you want to go to an Iron Circus vibe con... Chicago Arts and Comics Expo is where you should go. It's it's fucking rad. I love it. God, I'm gonna have to call all these different places and be like, <laughs> and be like, do y'all let me? Do y'all allow rats? Oh God, most people would, I think. Well, you'd be surprised when I applied to my Beaverton apartment on the phone. The lady's like, oh yeah, caged pets are fine. I said, yeah, okay. I specifically said rat, rats. She's like, cage pets are fine. Then when we moved in and the le we saw the, 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 we got inspected, it turns out the actual lease says no rats. Hmm. Rats are like one of the prohibited caged animals. That's bullshit. So uh, I had so to get I... a doctor to say, if you take my rats away, I'll like die of anxiety. Hmm. And that's how I got okay, to keep so my I... rats. I mean, it's partially. I I'm... shared the page. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, is this in the Discord? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um... In the last two panels, um, does that read as snow he's getting hit in the face with? Well, I have a filthy mind, so I have to say no. Spike, it doesn't look anything like that. I didn't tell you what I thought it looked like. You said like. you had a filthy mind, and I'm telling you, it doesn't look like something filthy. That is where you are wrong. Okay, Amanda, does it look like snow? Um, It doesn't really look like snow. It's not lumpy enough. Like it's also, too triangular. To my mind, right. snow doesn't have a conical end on it. Yeah. Like that. Well, this is magic snow that's getting thrown at him. So. Well, even so, it, it doesn't read as snow. It, it looks more like clay or something. Yeah, it wouldn't okay. be. Form I think it like needs to be like lumpy. Yeah. Okay. And is that does it turn to water in the last panel? Yeah, the, okay, it cool. then turns into water. All right, we're going to uh, stop now because the chat doesn't know what we're looking at, and I'm not yeah, going to put can't. it on the screen. Yeah. Because they won't be able to see the details. Yes. I'm also working on a comic while we are sitting here. And that's the one that is linked at the top of my Twitter. It is my, and I have, I pinned have. Pinned tweet. Yeah, I have my pinned tweet. Yes. Did you? I, 
No, I have not. Uh, I have been very busy. Character. But, this is Spike's character arc, and it's going badly. <laughs> but, 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 this is this is a little a little too much filler. Just for folks who tune into the Geek Show, I have set myself a reward. Once I get to page fifty, once I get to page fifty, I will reward myself in a tangible way. Everyone will be able to observe. So I'm very excited to get to page 50. And I'm also very excited. My stupid fucking characters are finally talking to each other because for over a year, I have been sitting by myself in front of this Wacom tablet and just thinking to myself, I can't wait until everyone sees how fucking stupid these people are. And maybe that's not fair. Stupid is not fair. Ignorant is fair, but uh, they're, they're dumb. They're dumb. Oh, my uh, um, my agent told me they've begun they're beginning the now the blah, blah, they're starting the process of pitching my shit my comic my shit my comic around. Which one is this? Parima. Ooh, okay. Good luck. It's, it's you know, a Sonic one. Yeah, the not no, not Sonic. It's not Sonic. It's it's it's, in, it's implicitly not Sonic because Sonic is bad. With Sonic with the serial numbers scrubbed off. It's better. <laughs> well, um, honestly, some of the best shit ever I'm, started I'm out. I'm getting a really that. good suggestion in my chat. If I want to look at snowballs, to look at Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah, ah, that, that, that is a very good one. But yeah, Thank I don't you. know if you can hear it, but I'm, I'm, I'm a. Uh, yeah, Discord probably cut anyway. I'm making the eyeballs on the puppet. I'm making clack. Oh my! There we go. There's a good splat. Um, I'm working on my yeah. next Halloween puppet. <laughs> but yeah, everyone, if you find a comic you enjoy reading on Twitter, just follow the person and just you know what? Here, all right, here we are. Here, here is how we take how we take back the comics. This is how we do it, everyone. Find people who are doing those comic threads on Twitter and make a list and put that shit in the list. I don't know. That's then, gonna get unruly, but do your best. Yeah, just follow the threads of the conversation, and then you can just read it that way. It'll almost be like the RSS days. No, it won't, when... because every time they make a new comic, they're going to make a new thread. Not necessarily. People are using the same thread. Not always. If People are using the same thread for a single comic, like a four-page, oh, yeah. like maybe an eight-page comic is two posts in a thread. But if uh -huh. they do a separate comic, you're, it's not going to be in the same thread. It's usually a different contained comic. Well, it's not perfect, but it's I'm just interesting. Saying. And it'll make, that's how you make Twitter good, <laughs> by following cartoonists. No, I just think we need to uh, supplement Twitter, get away from it. Also, 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 when you see art you like, everyone, faves are nice, but retweets are better. No, More I don't want it on my, no, I don't want that on my timeline. I like things mm -hmm. and I don't want them on my timeline. You don't want to see art on your timeline? It's my timeline. It's about me. <laughs> no, I'm not sharing oh my, my space. God. It's all oh I my. have, Spike. I'm not sharing. Now, I retweet art I like, and I have a rule where I retweet if it makes like me laugh, one I retweet piece it. of art a month, probably from somebody else, and it has to like make me go. Eh. Yeah. I, if it makes me laugh, I retweet it, which explains a lot of my tweets today. And if if it's art that I like, it I doesn't fit it. my brand. It doesn't get on. I usually, usually I will probably be different after I move when I can like just show up at your apartment and like yell at you. Yeah, ninety nine percent of the time, um, I will not retweet. I I guess I can call it corporate properties because, quite frankly, th I think we all see enough of that fucking shit. But if someone makes a cool comic or someone makes a cool painting or someone makes a cool drawing, and I really like it, I'll retweet that shit because it helps. You know, it, it it helps people I'm get a higher profile in part a world of the where, problem. There, where there are be where people are being fucking crushed by the marketing machine of mega corporations. You know, like it's yeah. it's incredibly difficult to get p eyes on your shit these days. Like just getting people to look at what you're doing, and it's rough. It's rough, and there are mitigating factors there. Like you can maybe sign up for a specialized platform, no names and get your comics out there so that more people see them but what Only are fans? you signing <laughs> actually yeah uh, <laughs> what are you what are you signing away when you do that you know question mark question mark i don't know abby if I'd you're rest. sleepy go to bed i swam in pool good for you abby <laughs> but yeah i just oh paul thank you oh wait no that's about your comic amanda oops you stole my valor. 
I stole Amanda's comics valor. How could you, Spike? Go into the convention just with a, with a chest full of medals I bought at the secondhand store. I stole your valor. <laughs> they just say gay furry drawer. Yeah, it's really. Oh, oh, are you talking about the Anatola Howard comic? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I fucking love that one. Um, I have to go soon. I did warn y'all that yeah. I probably have to leave early. Um, but I forgot. Fine. We can cut it a little. But I forgot. Now to. you can't leave. No. <laughs> oh no. But yeah. Um. Um. Uh. So uh, I'm gonna say my goodbyes. You guys can keep yeah. going. Um. Okay. And then uh, your your PNG yeah. tuber can just sit there in the corner. No, like they port. blip it. No, no. Spike. They they they, they deactivate when they're not here. Oh, okay. Uh, so um, uh, yeah, you can find uh my various werewolf comics in the future of the future uh on kelmcdonald.com. <laughs> my Twitter that I am just spamming cautionary fables on right now is Kelhound, which is spelled like Hellhound but with a K. Um, please go back to Lizard Prince and other South American stories, uh, please, which please, is crowdfunding please. on Iron Circus right now. Um, and um, also, if you want to join my fan Discord, um, you can just um, send me a message on Twitter or email me or whatever, um, and I'll send you the link. Um, and you can join me for watching werewolf movies once a month. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. See you later, Cal. Bye. 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 Hold on, I gotta end my stream and then I'll stop here. <laughs> okay. Paul G said, I am already reading your comics, Mike, but it is not adorable. It's well, John, but murder thieves are scary. It's yes. true. Yes. Yes, they are. They are I, scary. I do love those step idiots. Those step idiots um, is definitely the word for them. But, all right. Yeah. Bye, y'all. I love Bye. you. Bye. Amanda is irreplaceable Aww. and Thank Spike you. is a monster. Thank I you. am and she is. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, they're gone. They're gone. Okay. They're gone, just like that. And now we can talk about how much we hate werewolves. No. <laughs> but, yeah. I do need but, to take yeah. another photo of my inheritance and share it on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, the wolf statue. The wolf that, that I will wolf. inherit when she, her words, not mine, the wolves I will inherit when she dies. The Franklin mint ass wolves, yeah. Oh, and cow's gone. But yeah, um, I have a thing which I am indulging thoroughly right now when it comes to characterization, where I like to make you think one way about a character and then immediately make you think the other way, like make them think, think make you think they're terrible and then oh wait, I guess they're not, or make you think they're wonderful and then oh wait, I guess they're not. So I have been dying to get to the part in the comic right now where we have just seen the dude who spent the first 40 pages literally committing crimes, murder and arson and assault and robbing, you know, multiple fucking crimes. He shows up and, you know, he, he's just really nice. <laughs> and I, I just, I'm fucking, I'm fucking so thrilled. I'm finally at that part. Like, I think everyone who makes comics feels that though. Like there are these parts they just can't wait to get to, you know? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because it's all perfectly like mapped out in your head and you have all oh, these yes. high hopes about how well it's going to go over when you reveal this aspect of the character. So I, I am indulging in that right now. Of course, I have like multiple, multiple instances of that scheduled. Oh, and yeah. I, can't really, I can't really say anything about when you're going to see them because the comic updates when it updates. I have given myself permission for this to take 10 years if it has to. But at the same time, you know, I, I I appreciate anyone who has the patient patience and is along for the ride, no matter how long it takes. E <laughs> Did not cancel the chest. Oh yeah, go ahead. Cancel this shit out of me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, Amanda? you're in charge of your own cancellation. It's your party. Absolutely. Absolutely. What? Why you say my I name? Wa I want to talk. I want to talk about you moving to Chicago and where you are looking for apartments. I have no idea. I'm just looking for something I can afford. I do not care where it is. As long as I have some access to parking and they will let me keep my rats, I'm good. Where are you on? You Are you like on Realtor.com or something? Or? I don't know. I'm everywhere. I'm looking at Zillow. I'm looking at Craigslist. I'm looking at Apartments.com. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm looking uh, everywhere. Yeah. I mean, I could suggest neighborhoods. I it won't suggest mean shit to me. I don't want I, you'd have to show me a map. 
Okay, fair Because, like, that's not on maps. I'm like, this neighbor, I, I like, someone recommended a neighborhood, and I tried to find it, and I was like, I don't know where this is. Yeah, I... Y'all can't, get... can't just nickname a block something and think I can find it. Yeah. For what it's worth, I mean, I think there are a lot of great places out west and on, maybe immediately south to the south of the city. Like, north is just going to be fucking ridiculous rent-wise. Like, that's that's ridiculous i know this means nothing oh you just fucking said this means nothing yeah but but north chicago is going to be like unjustifiably expensive in my experience i'm officially gonna start looking and applying uh last week of october and ideally move by my birthday november 19th i don't know if that's unreasonable Ooh, that's fast is it i mean if you i i i don't fucking know like i i can't even say shit because i have an apartment hunted in like 12 years not even 12 years like okay. 20 years because okay. I, when i moved to chicago i stayed in an apartment for like 11 years and then i bought a place and i've been here another yeah. 10 12 years so i am totally i don't mind i don't mind applying years. sooner i just have the anxiety that like i get it and it's like oh you move in next week and it's like oh i wasn't you know what i mean yeah yeah i mean just literally not being able to get there in time because i will be driving yeah, it's a one thousand one hundred mile trip, so it's that's my anxiety. Mm -hmm. So I, I again, I don't know what to expect when moving anymore. Cause oh, Abby <laughs> Schomburg is not even Chicago. Wow. Here's the thing: I don't care if it's not technically Chicago. Mm -hmm. I have, you a do have a car, which I have is a, a thing car. I don't think about. Yeah, yeah I have a car, like, I, so I don't care if it's not technically Chicago. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have never actually, you know, in my adult life, owned a car. So it's it's something I don't really consider when people talk about where they live. And of course, you've got a fucking car, so you yeah. could drive. And Schaumburg's a bit out there. Schaumburg's a bit out there. My but only thing can, is, like, trying to yeah. figure out how I'm going to do it. Because it's like, do I want to fly to look at apartments? Because, like, that's a lot of money to fly. Yeah, if you want to, I mean, straight up. I mean, if you're going to buy a ticket for October or November or something, it won't be that expensive since it's a few yeah. months out. And you have my couch for as yeah. long as you need it. Well, it's more just to... because I'm so the the apartment hunting process is so foreign to me these days because of yeah because of because <laughs> of life. I'm like, yeah. could I do like could I fly up for a week and do that all in a week? You know what I mean? Yeah, I I know what you mean. Um, straight up, if you want to just try it for a week, maybe even two weeks, that that would be fine. You can sleep on my couch as long as you want. I couldn't do two uh, weeks. Oh, okay. I my mean, rats. fair enough. Oh, right. Shit. Right. Like, okay. my mom could take care of them, but she couldn't do, like, the maintenance on the cage and stuff. Like, she, they need their cage like, cleaned at least once a week. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, uh, unless I arrange it where I clean the cage, hop on a plane, and the first thing I do when I hop off the plane is clean the cage. Unless I did that, because yeah. that would technically be once a week. <laughs> Gotta take care of the babies. That is true. Yeah, that, that's the concern. It's This is... I don't even know how helpful this advice is because, like I said, now I I have friends who said they might like third party look at places for me, but if I'm looking at places out of Chicago where they need a car to get to, yeah. Again, like I I don't know how useful this advice is going to be because I have not apartment hunted in twenty plus years, but I'm sure that you can call up some like a uh, realtor type people and just tell them your situation. Tell them what your ceiling is rent wise and let them line up places for you. Because the last time I went, uh, well, fair enough, I was uh, apartment hunting in the I want to buy it sense. So maybe your mileage may vary. You can have them just like literally pick you up off my doorstep and spend the week, you know, three or four or five days out of the week being driven around to places and shown places. Yeah. And if you call them up and pre game it and say, this is what I want, and I will be there this week. Can you show me places? I think that would be a sure bet than renting a place sight unseen. I guess. And you I... can check out the the neighborhoods while you're here, and check out the walks. Well, there's also the anxiety if I've, if on that trip I don't find a place, having to come back and do it again. Yeah, that is true. That's the other. But you have a better sense of what Chicago's like. You'll have a better sense of the neighborhoods and stuff. That's fair. So... I mean, I guess there's also thing I kind of moved to. Uh... Oregon, uh, Beaverton, Oregon, sight unseen. Mm -hmm. I just applied for apartment for me and Lynn, and it worked out, and we went. <laughs> yeah, that is true. It's like it's not always going to go bad if you just like rent a place. So I'm thinking. 
I'm going to go fucking look on goddamn Zillow right now just because I can. I'm thinking what I'll probably... Yeah, yeah, realtors don't really do apartments. There are apartment finders. You can yeah. rent a short-term place while you look around. My concern about the short-term places are that... um, Where do I put my stuff? And what about my rats? I don't think... I think short-term places are even... I'm going to look for a place for rent in Chicago on Zillow. I could not do an Airbnb. No, my rats. Oh, no. No. Yeah, don't do where, that. And again... I. I'm being, I'm leaving, a, 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 what do I do with my stuff in the meanwhile? You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, so Amanda, if you yeah. don't feel comfortable saying it out loud in the chat, type to me the ceiling <laughs> for your rental amount in the uh, okay. Discord. Yeah. Because I'm on Zillow right now and I am, I am curious. Amanda is typing. Typing. Well, you don't know how poor I am, which is very, <laughs> which is very... It's Again, no you're gonna see these numbers. You're gonna go, oh no. Um, and I'm I'm assuming you're down with uh with a with a studio or it depends on what. Okay. Like I am down with a studio that's not a ten by ten room with a kitchen slapped on. Like yeah, I think I need I at least three hundred square three hundred square feet minimum. I'll probably be good with. Yeah, I, like I expect. Oh my god, I'm honestly surprised by how many of these are available in North Chicago. So you know what? Disregard everything I fucking said. I'm full <laughs> of shit. There are plenty of places in North Chicago. Lincoln Park, bullshit, bullshit. There's a place <laughs> for that much in Lincoln Park. Let me look. Well, the other thing Hold is, on. uh, does it have parking? That's the other thing. I will need parking. Oh, that's a good one. See, that's yeah. Let's and I also on. have been narrowing it down by places that allow cats because my assumption is if they allow cats, they're more likely to allow rats. Okay, I am clicking on Zillow right now. Allows cats. Let's see if they have... A cool 8K a month, you know, for a small thing. No, Badger, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use parking as a keyword and see what that does. I can't find... This is real bullshit. I'm very surprised, but there are places available in, frankly, really nice neighborhoods. There's I'm, a place, I'm, like, down I'm the road that's, like, out. a 14-minute drive down the road from you for, like, 900 a month, I saw. Yeah, I'm looking at places it's tiny. Like 835 for a 300 square foot Oh no, place. we're revealing the numbers. No, people will know <laughs> no, how poor I am. They don't know. That's what they don't that's not what you typed everyone. But like <laughs> when I talk about decent names I don't actually like, care. I just yeah, think it's funny like, yeah. We hide the numbers and we say the numbers. Like there I mean, you're not going to find a place in Streeterville obviously, but like there's I don't know what that means. Streeterville is I Every like how Iron thing. Circus Geek Show became apartment hunting with Spike yeah. and Amanda. <laughs> Sorry, we're boring. I don't care. But um, Look, I'm getting yeah. advice from the chat. I like it. Yeah, Streeterville is... Every city these days has a neighborhood called the Gold Coast because people are full of shit. Streeterville is Chicago's Gold, gold Coast. Basically. I don't know what that means. Ritzy. What's a Gold Coast? Ritzy. Okay. Yeah, the fun thing about Streeterville, here's a little Chicago history for you, and it's like it's probably part of why I vibe with the city so much. Streeterville is bullshit. It was built by an asshole who crashed his barge on a sandbar and then built an island out of trash on top of the barge and sandbar and then fucking chased everyone who tried to evict him off with a fucking gun and street <laughs> gangs and started charging people rent oh to live God. on his trash pile. Like this is real. If oh you want my to look god! At history, it's this is completely spell it. Story. I have. There's got to be a YouTube like just the word street and erville streeterville. There's got to be like a YouTube documentary yeah. about it. It was founded by an asshole who built a pile of trash and lived on it, and then charged people rent and oh, sold okay. like bootleg whiskey on it. And now it's like one of the oh, no. witziest neighborhoods in Chicago. It is Badger so says all of Amanda's paychecks are from Iron Circus. It's literally peanuts and Spike throws them at her while <laughs> demanding she dance. Yeah, well, Amanda <laughs> cries. The crying is very important. Yeah, I'm incredibly surprised that. <laughs> but yeah, um, you can live in the fucking near north, which, which kind of shocks me. Yeah. Like, this is... I. Ignore everything I said about maybe the West. Again, the they, they, these place, a lot of these places are probably going to do credit checks, and my credit's not great. Mm. Like but you will have a tax statement that says uh, you make a certain amount, right? Yeah, but let me type to you what that will say. Oh, I'm typing to you what my income was last year. Yeah. Oh my God, there are like genuinely cute fucking places. Oh, like ignore the the bracket. Oh, this, I didn't make bracket amount. 
Amanda, this is so fucking cute. Hold on, let me. I'm gonna link you something. <laughs> like we oh, can't. They can't even see what we're talking. About. There we go, Amanda. This place is so fucking cute. Look how cute this is. I mean, look. Okay. And it's, it's nice and clean. That is very cute. I think yeah. I've seen this one. That's a cute one. Available now. I can't go yet. <laughs> oh. But yeah, uh, I'm everyone. Once again, I'm totally full of shit. You could definitely live in the nor near north, north oh, side. Oh wait, one's available north. November first. Yeah. Well, I like the photos, but I am definitely team visit it first. Well, again, I could like I I've had multiple friends say I could pop over for you. Yeah, that that might work too. It's the thing I always remember is when we were. Uh, hunting for places to live permanently for condos we were shown a place and when we turned the lights on in the bathroom the biggest gnarliest house centipede you could ever imagine was just fucking chilling in the tub okay what's the problem with that i fucking hate house centipedes i, I will live them. i'll take a house I centipede them more i do not anything. care i hate them more and i just fucking freaked out and you could see the light die in the realtor's eyes he knew it was over <laughs> That would not deter me from living in an apartment. Oh, I, I understand. I understand. I, but... I've spec. I used to live in an apartment that had live bats in the walls. But that's just cool. No, rabies, not cool. No, it's fucking cool. It's I was scared cool. for my cat the whole time. Yeah, but because one like crawled through a like we found out because one of the light fixtures wasn't very secure on the wall and it kind of had a gap. Oh. And one day a baby bat fell out. And my cat oh, walked no. right up to it. And I was like, no. Oh, oh no, Mito, don't do it. Poor baby bat. It lost its grip. Yeah. I had to take it outside and it disappeared. I don't know what happened to it, but it like, screamed it got, at me. And I was just like, Mito had no prey instinct, but she went right to it. And I was like, oh, my God, the one day, the one day. Why oh. a bat? The, fucking speaking of that, everyone who is fucking new meat here, I used to have a dog named Harvey, and Harvey <laughs> was like an 11 pound completely hairless dog. If you want to know his breed, look up American Hairless Terrier, and that is what I had. I had a, I had a dog that looked like that. And Harvey, I was my dog's emotional support animal. My dog was a fucking mess. He needed to be around me literally all the time. And he just had a very anxious and cowardly affect. He just was scared of everyone that was not me. And he actively hated my husband because Matt touched me and that was not allowed. <laughs> so this dog would fight my husband for touching me. And my husband has such a pure and noble heart. He decided to interpret this as cute. <laughs> but um, Harvey and I were being, I was walking him one night and I, because of the hours I keep, I'm a fucking mess. I was walking him at like 4 a.m. And so I took him outside. We opened the back door to the apartment building I was living in at the time. And it was like something out of a Yogi Bear cartoon. A raccoon, like the fattest raccoon you ever <laughs> fucking saw. It just saw us and was like, <laughs> and it just tumbled off the top of a trash can onto the sidewalk. And then immediately like went left went right, went left, went right, looked at me, and then decided on left and just booked it up the sidewalk. Because <laughs> I clearly surprised it. And it was one of those moments where I just fucking looked at my dog and like the lunatic dog lady I am, I was just like, did you see that? <laughs> to, to Harvey. And I put Harvey down with the assumption he would just pee and we could go back inside because again, Harvey was not a brave soul. And Harvey immediately, very quickly trotted after the raccoon with his tail up and his ears perked. Like, what the fuck is that shit? And I was so shocked because this is a, my dog was a coward. Like, I <laughs> love him with all my heart, but he was a coward. I mean, the raccoon, raccoon was, was, the raccoon was radiating uh, <laughs> fear. Yeah. fear. But this dog was maybe half the size of that fucking raccoon. And he was ready to go. He just again. Like, just it's kind of, maybe it's kind of like it. how cats are not interested in prey if it's not trying to run. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely a thing. It's definitely a thing. I know my dog Lucy. Uh, despite being a she's some kind of pit bull mix. Despite being a pit bull <laughs> and having that hairier <laughs> aspect in her, she fucking okay. She loves rats. And we don't mean the way I love rats. No, no. She is obsessed with the idea of catching them. And 
she will not at the same time, however, like zero in on a rat unless it's running from her. Like if it's running from her, it's fucking game on. But if it's just going it's, for a little jaunty stroll, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, but if it's like ambling, you know, if it's just chilling, she'll walk right by it. But <laughs> once it's running, a, a, a switch gets flipped in her head. Yep. And it's, yeah. Yeah. I, I think you just have a big cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My mom's Harvey cats died. will like leave like roaches yeah. in the middle of like the big wood roaches in the middle of the living room, and they're just like, oh. It's not running anymore. Mm. Yeah, uh, Paul G. Not interested. Harvey, Harvey had a very powerful seizure one day. <laughs> and, Wasn't it because uh, he that... was so happy to see you? No, this is what killed him. <laughs> he had a he had a fucking massive seizure one day and was just. I walked into the bathroom and I found him just fucking Bless like his on heart. his side, just fucking twitching violently and i called my husband home from work and i was like the dog is straight up fucking seizing dude and we had to go to the emergency vet and they said there's something going on in this dog and i don't think it's fixable and we could put him on like all the machinery we got here but like that would literally cost you a thousand dollars a day so yeah. we had to have him put to sleep so poor baby yeah what was poor the time when he got so excited to see you he seized he, yes that was a thing that happened um this was not his that the one that killed him was not his first seizure. okay yeah there was one time where i had left for a convention because i was doing like a ton of conventions poor back then. <laughs> poor and awful I came, creature and i came home and keep in mind like i said this dog was incredibly anxious this i was harvey's emotional support animal and when i came home he just fucking his eyes glazed over and he went stiff after a moment where he was extremely happy to see me poor baby <laughs> Yeah, I loved Harvey a lot, but Harvey had bountiful problems. And American hairless terriers are still fucking bomb ass animals. They're gorgeous. <laughs> I would love another hairless dog one day, but I decided to go the route to adopt uh, this time. And I got Lucy from what I strongly recommend to anyone in the Chicago area who wants a pet. Uh, I got her from a, the uh, the anti cruelty. <laughs> bless you is the name of the shelter the chicago anti-cruelty society and when i got her she had just finished having puppies and she had those you know she had the uh, scar from her um her spay because right after she had the puppies they spayed her and she had weird mama dog instincts for the first several years we owned her because you know she'd had that hormone load that most female dogs who are spayed in puppyhood don't have so she would pick up toys that were soft and just gently carry them around and stuff but she stopped doing that a few years ago i think she's finally forgotten she was ever a mama <laughs> isn't that sad no she's a dog <laughs> yeah and now it's like oh god this is gonna be really tmi but uh amanda i hope you don't visit soon would you like to know why because of her pee pee problems? Yes. I'm, her... I'm keenly aware of her pee pee problems. We get Lucy updates during D D. Yes. Poor baby. Uh, my dog Lucinda, whom I love with all my heart, she's rocking up on 13 plus now. So she's an older dog. And she has had a chronic UTI for a long time. And this last month plus, maybe six, seven weeks, it has kicked into high gear. She has been on two different rounds of antibiotics, actually three different rounds of antibiotics, and she can no longer hold her urine. So this dog is peeing in the house upwards of 12 times a day. And I am not the most house proud person on earth, but I would rather not have friends over when my entire condo reeks of dog piss. We uh, She spends most of her time diapered these days, but the diaper falls off. And also there are times in between when she is not diapered and we have to cover the floor in giant puppy pads and she will just squat and go wherever she is. And her pee smells awful. And the most like, this is so fucking TMI. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's slightly slimy. Her pee is ah. not normal pee. Yeah. Her pee is not normal pee. It is opaque and slimy. Sometimes. Remember when we used to pretend this was about like comics? <laughs> I'm glad we've like just let the mask oh fall off. But yeah, that that's kind of the life I am living right now. 
and we are hoping we can get Lucy better. We just got word back from the vet, fortunately. The vet actually, since she has had this issue, she's been functionally incontinent for so long that the vet's all like, maybe this is not a UTI. And we sent a sample off to test for literal bladder cancer. And uh, we just got word back. That's not what it is. We didn't think that's what it was anyway. But um, that's not what it is. She just has world's gnarliest UTI and she's a very old dog. So she's having problems fighting it off. So Convince have... that dog to drink cranberry juice. I wish I could. I I'm just like, no, I'm imagining like, here you go. And her just giving you the most like offended look. Like, how dare yeah. you? And Bird Wizard Harvey was a little madman. He was just... That dog had fucking problems, but I loved him in the way it's like the dog so clearly loved me so much. You know? <laughs> he thought it's like I have heard it described like there is a way dogs can get where the only way to explain it is they think they're your girlfriend slash boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And Harvey thought he Harvey thought he was my boyfriend, which is why he hated Matt touching me and why he always wanted to be around me. And you know, it's hard to not take that as a compliment. Like the dog thinks you're her girl, you're his girlfriend. Like, and he's very protective of you and doesn't want anyone near you. And if he were a Rottweiler, that'd be super fucked up, and I'd be getting in a lot of trouble because this dog would be like growling and barking at people. But he was a little eleven pound dog, so fortunately, people just thought it was weird. <laughs> or maybe, yeah, it's just, yeah. Poor heart. I Poor have baby. Ashley. I sent yeah. you another one to look at. Oh, did you? This Let one's even cheaper. Oh, is this a, another apartment you found yes, on Zillow? Yes, I sent, I sent you another one. Like, obviously, mm -hmm. I can't move yet, so it's like, not even a yeah. thing. But yeah, I hope you're bookmarking these. Oh, I love the tram. I'm not, oh. I'm not oh. bookmarking them because I'm not apartment hunting till at least, like, end of, or maybe, maybe second. I don't know. What? I don't know when I should hunt. I am zooming out. Wow, you're all the way out there, huh? Wow, you're out in Oak Park. Mm -hmm. I mean, that ain't bad. I'm just looking at where you are. You're out in Oak Park. That's a bit out there. Eh. Yeah. You got a car, though, so. Yeah. Yeah. I did the thing where you draw your section that it can oh, search okay. in. You can, like, draw an area for it to search in. And I just mm -hmm. widened it to, like, comfortable drive. I'm willing to drive 30 minutes kind of thing. You know what I'm kind of interested in? I'm kind of interested in what's going on in Cabrini Green right now. For folks who are not Chicago folks. Yeah, like folks, me. And folks who don't read comics and don't know who Martha Washington is, not the first lady, the comics character. Cabrini Green is an incredibly notorious housing project that was in Chicago for 30 years. I don't know. It was mid-century. It was built, built as public housing. And it became like a notorious hellhole, Cabrini Green. Oh, yeah, and then, Spike, that's only a 13 minute drive from you. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting to it. Uh, everyone knows. What no, the, the apartment I sent you to. Oh, oh, okay. That's cool. But um, Cabrini Green was hell on earth for a long time, a lot of gun violence, and probably the most notorious. Yeah, issue... we ate Kel. Sorry about that. Yeah. The more the most notorious issue was uh, there was a story a while back that by a while back, I mean, fucking like 20 years where a little boy was hanging out with another group of little boys. When I say little, I mean, like, is nobody. This, wait, 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 wait. How, what but kind of story is this? It is a sad story. Mm. Not gory, but sad. Then and, keep it very short. Fewer details, please. Okay. Where it was like, when I talk, I'm talking about boys, I'm talking about like not a single person there had been through puberty. So like genuine little boys. And one of them was younger than the others, like six, seven, something around that. And they tried to get him to steal candy from the corner store because nobody would do anything to him if he tried to walk out the door with candy. But he didn't want to. So he said no. And... I think it was, they were 11 stories up and the uh, boy he said no to just picked him up and threw him over the side. Uh, yeah. And this, the part everyone remembers is his older brother, who was also in the group, also a child, but also in the group talked about how he had tried to run down the stairs fast enough to catch him before he hit the ground. Uh, Spike. Yeah. yeah incredibly no. gnarly. No. Um, 
Yeah, there was a radio show. Another thing about Chicago is they have bomb ass public radio. Bye, Badger. They have bomb ass public radio. If you listen to This American Life, it's out of WBEZ, Chicago. And that's why it's so great because it's in Chicago. But uh, I forget, was that story you just told about why Chicago's great? (laughs) No, uh, I'm I'm about to say that there is a site called StoryCorps. And uh, if you want to go to StoryCorps, you will find a story with this title that is about what I just talked about called remorse. The, oh, I'm sorry. It wasn't 10 stories. It was 14 stories. You got thrown off of the 14 stories. Oh, oh big difference. <laughs> like, yeah. like, Oh God. And he was a five-year-old. Thrown okay. No more before. details. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No more. And, Not uh, with children. Children is where I cross the line. No more with about the children's. And uh, it was actually reported on by. Not cross the line. Draw the line. Little boys who lived in the Ida B. Wells housing development. Lee Allen Jones and Lloyd Newman. I'm pretty sure one of them is now a perennial candidate, Green Party candidate in Chicago to tell you how how long ago this happened. Like a 11 year old boy has grown up and he is now a politician. So that's that's how long. Gotcha. Gotcha. I'll check that out for sure. And they also did a thing. This was in the 90s. So it's obviously mentally prepared. They also did uh, another radio series where someone just gave them, you know, recorders and had them record stuff called uh, Ghetto Life 101. And it's also on the StoryCorps website. And, you know, StoryCorps spelled like corpse, C-O-R-P-S. So Chicago has really great public radio, like really, really good. Like WBEZ is where I get a lot of my domestic, like United States centric news. And also it has this American life on it. So anyway, I'm done bumming everybody the fuck out. Are you? (laughs) Never. But for now. But she, I, I, I'm excited to actually have you like come and chill out. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's not, not right now, <laughs> not in this instant, but soon. Oh, don't worry, not at this interest. Yes, thank you, thank you for understanding. Like, if fucking, I don't know, if it's like a super emergency and a tornado hits your house, you're, you're still welcome. I don't like, mind. Again, thank you. I have thank rats. You. They love to pee for fun. Yes. Honestly, that's a cute thing about rats. I know that sounds fucking disgusting to people, but if you have pet rats and they're just exploring you, like if you pull them out of, out of their little enclosure and you just put them on your desk or put them on your sweater. I mean, it depends. Yeah. Sometimes just so they keep track of where they've been or just, or just to scent mark you, they will leave like a tiny pinhead droplet of pee on you. Yeah. It's just a thing they do. And... <laughs> My rats are really, my rats are very, my rats are very good about it. Um, I, I do always have baby ro- ro- baby wipes when it's like outside time, but like my rats are pretty good about it because they always have access to their cage. Um, I never take them to a spot where they can't get back to their cage. So you will, yeah. I will watch them go, hmm, run to the cage, pee and poo, then come back. Yeah, Abby, I just don't want people in my fucking. Room. <laughs> I'm sorry. The thing about rats is like they're prey animals, so they don't like to stink and they don't like to leave their smells everywhere. So like yeah. if you give them a poop and pee spot, they will you well, more of a poop spot than the pee spot. But they yeah. will usually try not to do it unless it's like, I really gotta figure out how to get back to my cage. I'm gonna pee on this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna leave a little waypoint marker right here. Beep. Yeah. yeah, little little tiny mega mega droplets not mega drop mini droplets little pinhead sized droplets of rat pee as opposed to the fucking damn break that lucy no is and it's 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 like super diluted too it's really just to put a stink for somewhere and be like oh yay because yeah. again i mentioned this before rats are like cannot really see well at all yeah and like i said before when i was gross and everyone out it's not healthy pee you know it's slimy pee and, and uh they do that thing where they uh so it stinks well, rats do that thing where they, um, because they can't, don't have very good death perception, they will sway their head back and forth. If you ever I see, love that shit. if a that rat is, is ever look like has its head pointed to you and they sway their head left and right, it means they're trying to perceive exactly how far away you are because that's how they they kind of get some depth perception. Yeah. I so love sometimes if I'm doing that. something across the room and they're interested, I'll see them look at me and then just start swaying their head because they want to figure out what the hell I'm doing and where I am. They're super fucking cute when they do that. It's They're so funny. Uh, but yeah. But yeah. Here's hoping I, things go well. Yeah, you can definitely afford to live around here. Yeah. It's just, yeah. I, my, honestly, I think I, I can afford it. 
Mm -hmm. I just, it's the application process that I'm super yeah, anxious I, about. I totally get it because you were talking about how your credit isn't the best ever. And, and I can tell you like why specifically here. I'll, I'll type. If I can you type. are comfortable. Oh, it's in Discord. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go to Discord. I'm going to look. These are secrets you are not privy to, YouTube. Let's see. I am on the anticipation. Ah, uh, okay. Amanda is still typing, so I'm... Oh, that's not so bad. Yeah, no, no. So that's why I'm saying it's iffy. They could look at that yeah. stuff from... And again, that stuff's... The, the first stuff is from, like, when I lived in Portland and I had the bad time, and I just haven't been able to catch up on that stuff. But the yeah, new Amanda... stuff... Yeah. Amanda is telling me about all that fucking cocaine she muled in the yeah. 80s and how difficult it is it was, to get It that. was rough in Portland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that's why I had to leave. Body scanner, scanner and they found those like 83 condoms full of China white. You know, that was difficult. I was just like putting rubber bands on little bags of cocaine and making them look like little rats. Exactly. Shaping and them and putting like, no, those are rats. <laughs> <laughs> that time you made your rats mule cocaine was kind of fucked up. I can't lie. I did. I just like strap taped it to their backs. <laughs> Yeah, and they're like squeaky, like shh. Uh, but yeah, now that's what. So that's why it's it's it's. If they look at the old stuff, they might go like, mm, I don't know. But like in terms of my recent stuff, I'm. I mean, you know, it's not a bad score. No, it's not. I've seen definitely seen worse. Yeah. So yeah, it's up in the air, and not all of them check credit. But there's yeah. also the fact that mm, because of the pandemic. Yeah, I was about to um, say. I was about to say. My rental history, like I. To how my last five years I've lived in my mom's house. Yeah, they're not gonna care about after five years. Well, no, I have good my rental history before I got into my mom's place is good, oh, sure. but I can't yeah. reference it because it's too old now. Like I have yeah. good references from my old apartments. I left them in good standing, but I most of them aren't gonna care about them. They're only gonna care about like the last five years. It's like I've been in my mother's house. Yeah, like straight up renting a recession, I think you might have a easier time renting now than you would. Yeah, before. I mean it could again. My credit was bad when I went to Oregon. Uh huh. You know, and I was living with my mom then. Too, so who knows? Yeah. If I were you, and again, grain of salt, have an apartment hunted in twenty years. Uh, if I were you, straight up, just make a list of the stuff you like. Put together some meetings. Try and do two a day, maybe. You know, and just either drive there or, honestly, Chicago public transportation is really easy. Yeah. Uh, just do that and. Get a feel for the city while you're wandering around being shown apartments. And after the week is over, decide then. Because if you don't like it, worst case scenario, you live there for a year. And then you move. I, I'm not going to, just for the case, for the sake of like, oh, actually, you know what? I'll type it. I'll type it because the, the chat will disappear someday. Oh, your mom does have a different name than you. so Spike, you I was saying, don't name. say that. So, Spike, oh, don't say that out see. loud. Spike. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Because I. Sorry. Why are you trying to ruin it, Spike? You're trying to tattle on me. I'm sorry. I was asking sorry. if that would work. It. I. I think it would. I okay. Would. Why are you trying yeah. to rat on me? Ruin it. Work. I have a like a document, a documented recording of my lies for anyone who tries to look this stuff up. But yeah, what I'm saying, everyone, is fucking. I'm Chicago, joking. I don't think anyone. I don't think an apartment's gonna be like. Let me listen no. to every episode of this podcast. No, she's no, done. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking podcast air quotes it's not a podcast but fucking podcast it has like 10 likes and 80 views i know i just thought it was funny now. like no my sin spike no please god this is so weird i'm like a f old fucking woman and i'm looking at these little studios and going oh man that cute little fridge and that, that calling that it amanda's little mom's mother. last name's amanda that would be like these are cute weird little yeah. yeah, you're gonna make it after all kind of apartment. What does that mean? Oh, fuck. I'm so old. Um, Again, was... Spike, you can't just assume it's because of your age. I lived in a cardboard box for most yeah, of my life. Uh... <laughs> yeah, there was a there was a sitcom called the Mary Tyler Moore, Moore show, and it was about, you know, bright eyed, excited young woman <laughs> moves to the big city. <laughs> 
and the theme Sorry, song. the chat was like, we scrubbed your podcast and you smuggled how much cocaine? <laughs> but yeah, uh, it was about a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed young woman moving to the big city on her own for the very first time. And the theme song. With us Gen Xers, it became what the kids today would call a meme. Where it's just, you know, oh, you're gonna make it after all, was the theme song. And it would have Mary Tyler Moore in the middle of, like, Times Square throwing her hat in the air and, and, and looking like she just came. You know, like she was super excited to be living there. Yeah, uh, I'm even gonna splurge. I'm even gonna splurge. Like, okay, you know me. This hurts. Uh-huh. Um, I, I, after jobs I did this year, I will have enough to afford this. And probably pay rent for uh, like a whole year if it's within my budget. But uh -huh. it hurts me. And you know why. Uh -huh. You know me. But yeah. I can technically afford to just get one of those U-Box movers things. Well, they'll just move all your stuff for you. Uh, I mean, it would probably work. The alternative is getting a U-Haul and towing my car. I mean, which are you more willing to do? One is two hundred dollars more than the other. Can you spare the two hundred? I prop yes. Yeah, I'm I, genuinely I, I, considering because it's like it's a thousand. It's a thousand one hundred mile drive. Mm -hmm. My car can't tow really anything. I don't trust that little thing. Sure, not for a thousand miles anyway. Ugh. I'm considering getting one of the boxes where they get your stuff in the box and they deliver, it, and then I would just drive up in my car yeah yeah i mean there are a million ways to do this and i think you'd get here just fine equally in the end it's all about what you're willing to fucking put up with yeah. you know because i know you're gonna have a bunch of moving parts you're gonna have rats in the car with you oh yes and i don't know like i grew up in a house where my dad would drive from the dc suburbs to dothan alabama in one day in one stretch so uh, i don't know it's more that i don't think my family I don't think my family um, would enjoy that at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so two, I don't think you. they could both get off work. Oh, so they're coming with you? No, 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 they're not. Oh. Oh. I'm saying they couldn't. Okay. I don't think they can both get off work long enough. Mm -hmm. So they, they will not be helping me with that. So you've actually had long haul driving experience. How, yes, how, I've done it How much twice. do you do in a day? Like, what do you consider a normal it's, amount to do in a day? I think it's safe to drive up to 500 miles a day. Like, I've already, no, I've planned the road trip. I already know where, where I'd stop for the hotel. Oh, cool. I'd probably okay. do seven hours one day, nine hours the next day. You can drive about 500 miles a day safely. And uh -huh. that's kind of about how much it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God. Um, I mean, two or three I've, days to get here sounds like a good idea. I'd, I'd be trying to do it in two. Yeah, fair enough. But, you know, life happens yeah this is so interesting <laughs> again it's really just the application process that has me I like am... wanting to rip my hair out yeah but i still think it's fucking doable especially since you know the economy's cooling yeah. down and people and are... i have references for business people i have yeah, character I... references i'm a fucking reference i'm a I know, reference i know yeah it'll probably be, like... be fine i'm just my anxiety is that they go all right my anxiety is that either B, I can't. They all reject me. C, mm -hmm. I get one. I'm like, okay, it's available. You need to get the keys in a week. I mean, I could go get them for you. Is that doable? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't I, know I, if I, you I, can do have a third party pick up your keys. But if you do need to be here in a week, I mean, you could be. Yeah, but like, like for, for example, like I'd have to pack in. A, ugh. I have to pack in a week and arrange the U-Haul and rent it, and like they might not have one available. You know what I mean? Uh huh. That's uh -huh. the concern. Yeah, I I totally fucking get this. I totally fucking That's get this. That's the concern. It's just I really don't. And think I say that like I haven't done this before. I did this when I moved to yeah. Oregon. I don't think they'd spring the whole "you get the keys in a week or it's off" thing on you. I yeah. really don't. I don't. I mean, that doesn't feel like normal ass behavior. They, yeah. They'd be happy to rent it to you and let it stand empty the whole year, frankly. So. <laughs> I don't think that's likely. Like, they'll give you a date the key is available at the desk. And then it's up to you to come get it, I think. I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, I'm I sure may have to revise it. my, like, how soon I start looking thing, but... Uh-huh. <sighs> but, yeah. 
can't wait to get you here. This will be fun. Yeah. You'll keep me on the straight and narrow. You'll make me work harder because you'll actually come and visit and we can I'll like kick in your up. fucking door. You'll kick in my door and you can like step over the puddles of piss and sit at my <laughs> kitchen table with me and work from there. Oh, that would be neat. Yeah, it would be neat. I don't go into the office super often, so it would probably be. You can just... call ahead and reserve one. Yeah, you can reserve U-Hauls, but if a, yeah. if there's just not one available in the span of time, I need to get one. Like they're all yeah. reserved. That's the con again. These might be completely stupid yeah. worries because you tearing your hair out over shit that exactly. Yeah, Honestly, it's just all. it's like my this is how I am. Anxiety. I have to plan everything perfectly with stuff like this. Like I finally go got over the hill. Or my okay. Well, most of my family's now okay with it. There was a lot of drama. Uh -huh. There was a lot of drama, which is I why I kept waffling it. between uh. Maybe I should just move to stay in Texas, but no, it, we finally got over the drama hump, and now I can be openly be like, no, I'm going to Chicago, this is the plan, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I mean, worst case scenario, I have to wait longer past Christmas. Worst yeah, case scenario. If, if that's what it is, that's what it is. It's going to happen. You'll be good. Yeah. It's yeah. just, oh, the things, I was like, oh, no, it's real now. No! Yeah, I mean, I would sit here and be like, don't move during Christmas, but fuck it. I moved January 1st, so. Like, January well, I, I, I'm yeah. trying to beat Christmas. Yeah. Like, I want to move I mean, for my birthday. Be perfectly honest, if you can, you can. If you can't, you can't. Yeah. Don't want... beat yourself up if you don't make it by your birthday. Yeah, I just, ugh, that's the goal. Because I, I don't want to yeah. move through Christmas, so it would either be before Christmas or after. Yeah, just don't fucking be all like, oh, I failed if you're yeah. off by a month. Like, it literally doesn't matter. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. Anyway. Okay, we have streamed for two hours. We did I it. The a... obligatory two hours. We're free. The obligatory two hours. Thank you for the sitting The most boring through... episode we've done. Yeah, thank you for sitting through that bullshit, everyone. We really appreciate it. <laughs> we'll be oh, yeah, it would be good to beat the time. snow. You're right. Oh, fuck. I didn't even think about the goddamn see again this is my whole not non-driver brain <laughs> at work where i just like the snow is not a thing i think about so fuck shit yeah that is pretty serious yeah. damn okay damn. everyone everyone thank you thank you thank you thank you we promise not to do this ever again <laughs> this is bullshit and you don't deserve it you deserve better you can follow me on twitter at iron underscore spike check out the pinned tweet for my comic about Three idiots who are elves, Bolsheviks, and criminals all put together. I'm having a lot of fun with it, and I hope you will too. Please support the Lizard Prince and other South American stories. The very, very last Cautionary Fables and Fairy Tales collection ever. We're out of continents. This is it. I'd love. I can to make a new one. I'm gonna ignore you. I'd love to get it to 75k <laughs> so we can print it bilingually in English and Spanish. I think that'd be an awesome send off for the series. Go to ironcircus.com and you will see the link. Please back it. And if you can't back it or don't feel like backing it, please spread the word, link it, show it to people. We want this in libraries and in people's hands. This would be a really cool way to send off the series. Uh, yeah, that's it. You can Appreciate find me to at my Twitter. It's under my name. I have a, <clears throat> I have a pinned tweet that conveniently links to all of my things. Please like this this uh, podcast. That's not the word for it, but that's I, what society is decided to call it. Well, I mean, <laughs> I call it a podcast because that's what like YouTube parlance is for this kind of thing has been. Even if it's streamed, it's yeah. like you literally don't have to watch if you don't want to. Yeah. That's been my like how i'm rolling with the terminologies everyone's calling this kind of thing a podcast i think it's the idea is you don't have to look yeah please like and follow and subscribe to iron circus comics thank Yee. you so much thank you thank you i know right isn't a pin tweet neat yeah shut up <laughs> good night everyone love a pin tweet